This episode is brought to you by marketing consulting firm, the Bonafide Lyrics and Marketing, LLC, where creativity meets business. You can check us out at www.theblm.com for more information on how we help local artists and creatives maximize their business presence. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. It's the All Love No Fear Podcast. Hey, It's the All Love No Fear Podcast. Check us out. It's the All Love Oh No Fear Podcast. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All Love Oh No Fear Podcast. Hey. What up? Everybody, we are here in Cancun. Wow. Um, Mark's excited. Um, we have been consuming a number of these mojitos. Thank you very much. They've been great. Um, and so we've, been, we've just been having a blasty over here at uh, the Mexico. And so, yeah, that's, that explains your exuberance today. I can't really speak to any other times where you've been giving a lot of energy. But today, I can say that that is the reason. Were you on a hotel Wi-Fi? I ain't never even got on there. I'm nosy. I was just turning off your sound. And I was like, oh, snap, he's been on the hotel Wi-Fi this whole time? I should probably turn it off. Let me turn it on right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, um, I'm recording multiple different ways. Hopefully this audio is cool. Because it might not be, because, you know, we in a and whole other place. Our bad. Pull the jazz. Our bad. Respect me. But at least you get the love from Cancun. That's fine. He's, he's very, very animated here, very hyped. Yeah. It's our first international podcast episode. Hey, first international podcast episode. I, I was just trying to figure out if I had said that right. It yeah, it's the first time recording outside of the house in a couple of months. <laughs> 17 or 18, to be yeah. specific. So yeah, it's a whole yeah. new world. It's a whole new world. Yeah. Um, you want to show the people outside? Give them a quick camera view of the outside of our view. Oh. This is where we are. This is what we're doing. It's outside. I don't know if y'all can see. The sun might be in the way. But yes, that's beautiful blue water out there and coral sand. So it's very, very um, not hot when you walk on it. Very, very jazzy, very nice, very not ghetto. Um, we're right here. So we can walk out from this little balcony onto the beach. Like there are some steps over to the right of where we are. So we can walk out and go to the beach. Uh, there are some iguanas that live here on the property. Um, <laughs> They were hanging out outside. They hang out in this area where we are. Um, Yeah, I've discovered I don't really do uh, animals running up on me. Um, If I know they're coming, it's a different story, but apparently I don't do well when they they just pull up. So we had some food the other day and like the family of five pulled up, I guess trying to see what was up. And I was like, I'm gonna go inside. Mark was a brave soul and stayed outside, but the iguanas were like, oh, we smell we smell burgers, we smell fries, we smell, we smell things, so we're going to come by. It's a little alarming for me, but... Yeah, you, you weren't about it I, at I left. all. I left. Um, I went back inside and I sat on the bed and I was like, wow, put that out there. Marked out there with the iguanas. If they got you, I was just going to call the hotel. I wasn't going to attempt to intervene because I don't know. But iguanas, they seem cool. Mm-hmm. They seem super cool. They mind their business. They don't bother anybody. Work. They just walk around. They live here too. It's like the bodega cat. They live here. It's just the bodega you know, cat. Yeah, they just live here, and you know we all deal with it. Nobody seems to be alarmed by them. Everybody's just like, oh look, it's an iguana. So, you know, that's that. We did see some kind of fish in the water today. It looked like a swordfish. It was a couple of different fish. It was a couple of different fish. Uh, but but the one I saw was, was was like the little skinny swordfish. Yeah. And there was like there's a few bigger ones yeah. that, were, that were swimming around. Yeah, I was like, I'm not really sure what's <laughs> yeah, like, going on here. Like they were, they weren't small. They weren't small, and they were, they, were, they were good, like two or three feet. Yeah, and we weren't like far out into the water, so I was like, why y'all over here? Y'all supposed to be like in the bay, like that. Once there. again, we we in their home. Right, right. But also, <laughs> you're supposed to be in the bay. Like, why are you up here? Like, what's going on? 
Like I just, I just had some questions. But the water was deep enough for him to swim comfortably. Yes, yes. It was. I did not expect to see them though, so that was a little bit yeah, they were... alarming for me. But you know, Mexico is beautiful. The mm-hmm. food is great here. Yep. Um, the service is great. Definitely yep. having a good time. Would return. Ixnay on the um, timeshare presentation, though. Um, we went to two. The first one was cool. The second one, like, it was going well. And then at the end, the dude kind of got spicy and was trying to, like, pocket watch. And I got loud. And, you know. Did I get my gifts? Yes, I did. Hopefully that young man learned on yesterday not to pocket watch people because nobody has time. I wasn't mean or anything. I was just kind of like, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Because I was like, when he said what he said, because we were just kind of, you know how they be trying to get you with the timeshare presentations. And we were just kind of like, yeah, it's just not really a thing that we could do right now. It's not really realistic, whatever the case is. Dude was like, oh, well, essentially, like, how did you afford this trip? If you saying that you can't do this right now. And I was like, excuse me, Mr. Sir. Are you, are you counting my ducats? Are you in my business? Are you, are you trying to overstep your bounds? Sounds like it to me. You should relax. And I don't think he caught it. Like, I was trying to tell him politely at first, without raising my voice, that he should chill. But I don't he think kept, he was trying to. He, he did overstep. He, he kept pushing it. And I was just like, all right. He definitely overstepped a few times. He, definitely. And I just kept looking at Mark like, because, you know, sometimes I'd be, I'd be ODing and doing the most. So sometimes I need another person to just confirm that I'm not going crazy. And it was just kind of like, when Mark was like, all right, listen. I was like, well, I guess. I guess he told you. Because if you don't know how this goes, what usually happens is they have one person that comes in to, and they're the, the first, first point of contact. And they're usually like the, the most bubbly, mm-hmm. right? Just to get you in, in, in the room where it happens, right? The room where it happens, the room where it happens, the room where it happens. Then you get introduced to another person who shows you around. And they're trying to show you like, oh, this is exciting and everything. They keep trying to drop hands like, what, don't you think you would do this if it's affordable? And we were like, yeah, maybe. If it's affordable and to our standards, mm. not to yours. Mm. <laughs> um, and then um, they kept uh, doing that, walking around and everything. And then when you finally get back to the table, they show you somebody else. In between that, we had a whole video too. Yeah. It's crazy. But like, I'm, I'm talking about like just in general, mm. like for all these yeah. presentations, yeah. like anytime you want to do it, because like now it's not really timeshares, like, like actual clubs. vacation clubs is a new thing. It's the doing. same thing. They're just using like, different words. Yeah, it's just it's just for more locations because like people realize that oh, timeshare is one location. People don't want to go to the same location, so let's give you a, a brand, a, a plethora of locations mm-hmm. with the same concept. Yeah. So then they'll go to somebody else, and they come and give you the financial thing. Like boom, boom. This is the cost. Hey, don't you want to do this? How about this? How about this? Nah, I'm good. Like, but what if you do this, this, and this? Nah. And then like. Usually at this point, they say like, what, 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 how much money do you think would work for you to do that? And I usually give an outrageous low number. Yeah, like $50. <laughs> I'm like, $50. $50 a month, I would do this. Mm-hmm. And they're looking like, uh, <laughs> they always look at me crazy. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Because initially what they usually give you is like $400. Mm-hmm. Like, like, it's like $6,500 down payment and like $400 a month, something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, $50. No down payment. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And they be You're like, like oh. uh, let me go talk to the manager. Uh, they come back. It's usually, it's not as high as what they gave before. Um, it's usually like something somewhere around like 125, 150. This is, mm. this is, this is the same, no matter what club it is, it's the same process. Yeah. It's usually the same numbers too. Yeah. They come back, the lowest they, they will usually give you is between 125 and 150. Mm-hmm. And they'll do like something like, okay, $1,500 a month. $1,500 down payment, mm. 125 150 a month. How can you do that? We were like, nah, son. And then the last chain of command is usually the big manager that mm. comes in. He was like, how about this trial? $99 a month. And we could do it for for um, the first few months and then do it from there. And how does that work for you? <laughs> and then, no. but, but like, the, the thing is, by the time we're kind of like, all right, 
like, so this last time we did it, we were anticipating the manager one, like, when it, when it's, but like, but the second guy was like prolonging it too much. Yeah. We were like, yo, we, we know where this is going. No, we don't want it. Come on. Come on. Right. We, bring, we, bring the other guy. Bring the other guy so we can say no to him. Come on. Because like we were <laughs> over it and then it was like, when he started like being, being like wild aggressive, like trying to be like, well, y'all say y'all broke. So why y'all here? And I was just like, I'm like, we're, we're, we're we we're, were going to say no in the first place. Like, no, nothing you were saying, Jenny. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> we're going to say no. And the fact that you you fixed your mouth to say that, like, sir, no. Even if I was considering it, even if I had been thinking about it. Yeah. Just the minute that you said that, it's canceled for me. Yeah, you were saying that, and then you tried to come with the, like, well, how about, like, uh, you don't pay nothing to your vacation? And he was like, nah. How about you go kick rocks with Sandals on? How about <laughs> that? That'll be good. How about that? Not respectfully. Yeah. So he, I, he got prolonged. I was like, we're, we're, we're going to say no from the beginning. Yeah. And by the time the big manager got there, like I was literally like, yo, if they had, if they take one more minute, like I'm leaving. Like I don't care. I, about I this. think when the guy I'm sat down, he was like, so what about? He, he, he was like, what about? I was like, no, no, I don't want the trial. No, no, no I know it's trial. No, no, I already know it. No. He was like, oh, oh, okay, okay. So he he's ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> so. Cause I like, cause you know what it is. I didn't so. realize how loud we were talking when we were like talking to the guy when he said. Basically, like, oh, y'all said y'all broke, so why y'all here? <laughs> like, I think we were talking kind of loud, and so, like, the ma- I think the manager overheard, but he, like, didn't want to ask us directly, so he asked the lady who brought us in as she was walking out to ask us what happened, and we told her. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, your man's, your man's wild. That's yeah. why that happened, because I think, I think we, our voices got a little elevated because it was like, I'm the type of person, like, I'm like... It, it, was, it was that and the fact that we, like... Shut down the manager so quickly. Like, yeah. He came. He just sat down. He was mm-hmm. like, "So, so we have a trial." We were like, no. "Nope, I know what the trial no. is. I don't no. want it." No, he's no. like, well, "Like, nope, no. move on, let's move go." On. Let's he was, go. They were like, oh, "Okay, so they, these people, some, these people are some, over. Something has happened. Yeah, <laughs> something has occurred." Yeah, because it was like we was ready to go. Like we didn't have no other trips. No, other, we didn't have nothing going on. I just was like, if I sit in this room for one more second, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna behave in a very unladylike and unchristian like manner because the audacity. It's the audacity for me. So, yeah. We had to go. We had to go. We got some nice little gifts. Uh, here's one of them. Some little agave liqueur. We got one of these. We got a little Cancun bag that's over in the corner. Yeah. And some t-shirts. We got um, a coupon for a massage and exfoliation situation that we're going to go do after we finish recording. Work. And uh, what else did we get? I said there was something else, but I don't know. I don't remember. But anyway, it's been a good time. If y'all looking to go to Cancun, check out Grand Park Royale. Um, swerve them on that timeshare presentation as much as you can. Yeah. Um, if 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 you know us, we'll talk to you. We'll let you know how to navigate. Because, like, they try to sell you on a timeshare so you know how to navigate and how to, like, schedule the thing. Because you got to schedule dinner and stuff like that. Yeah. If you know how to do it, you don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you can just kind of, like, just avoid them. Like, just avoid them. Yeah, we avoided them for a few days. <laughs> we avoided them for a long time. Yeah, we got here Friday and they were trying to get us. They got we tried to get a Saturday and we was like, nah. Tried to get a Sunday. We was like, nah. And then finally we were like, okay, we'll go Monday because we have to do the COVID test. And we got to schedule the um, reservation. And we got to schedule the reservation for the the jazzier restaurant. Yeah, and we didn't really understand the process for that. So we're yeah. like, might as well just figure out the process. Now we know the process. We promise you we're never going to do it again. Never going to do it. Never going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> never ever. It's over. You can never ever. Oh, the other thing we got was a voucher for like a four days, three nights at another yeah. like property that this organization owns or whatever the case is. Um, I think they're all in like DR or or Mexico. You know, the other thing that irritated me too, the dude kept bringing up DR and I was just like, no. As a black person, I'm never going to go there. So, no. Like, I'm like, why are people bringing up DR? Like, it's popping, sis. Like, man, no disrespect to my Dominican people. I'm sure y'all think y'all spot is lovely. But no, it's a hard no for me. I don't have any interest in going to anybody's DR. So, like, the fact he kept saying that, I was like, there are other places, sir. There are <laughs> other places that y'all have. Y'all got a whole book of places. Why you keep talking about DR? I don't want to go there. Word. Um, but, like, um, shout out to everybody. Thank you so much for participating. Everybody's watching the live. Everybody um, who's listening on the uh, DSPs, we appreciate all of you. Yes, yes. We're a little late with this. We were supposed to record this on... Maybe day. 
Sunday. Sunday. Then but Monday. The yeah. Sunday we went to Ila Mujeres and we was outside all day. Yeah. And we're supposed to do it yesterday, but we got tired. Yeah, we were doing too much, I think. What did we do? We went we were on the beach, we were at the pool. I think it was the alcohol mostly, honestly. It's possible. Yeah. And it then was, we I, had I'm like not, it's not it's not wrong. Yeah. So, so we were very tired. Because I think I fell asleep. Mark was talking to me, apparently. He was saying words. And I went to sleep. So I yeah. It's been like that. So we're here now, awake. And ready to to pod. Word. So yeah, let's get into love it or, or lose, lose it. it. Hey, love it or lose it. Hey, 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 love it or lose it. Hey, love it or lose it. Hey, 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 yeah. You know, and the thing is, I had it up in front of me, and I still still forgot. Um, so, yeah. Love it or lose it this week. Um, I decided to make it uh, Mexican food or love it or lose it. We are so not. So, yeah. So, Mexican food. Love it or lose it. The four options are enchiladas, quesadillas, chilaquiles, and tostadas. Tostadas, chilaquiles, quesadilla, quesadilla, or quesadilla, and enchiladas. Enchiladas. Pam, 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 pam. Chilaquiles, and what was that one? Tostadas. Tostadas. Decisions, decisions. Maybe um, I lose it. Or th- explain what love or lose it is. So. so love it or lose it. It's a game we play here at the beginning of the podcast. Uh, we present four options. One person and one person usually knows what the four options are. So it's a surprise to the other one. Keeps it fun. Keeps it interesting. So we present the four options. You have to choose one that you would lose, throw away forever, never have again. One that you would keep, love, hold on to, cherish for the rest of your life. Like you cherish food. So, um, those are the options that we presented this week. Every week, it's a new category. Tune in next week to see what we'll do next. I'm bad at winking, by the way. So if that looked weird, my bad. Um, so yeah, what you lose it? Um, lose it for me might be the enchiladas. Okay. Um, I don't like enchiladas are cool. I'm not against them. Um, but I, I don't know if um I would choose them. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I don't like the, uh, with the extra stuff on top of it and everything. Mm-hmm. It be like it. Yeah. Sometimes I don't, I don't like what extra things. So maybe enchiladas. Cause I feel like it's enchiladas more of a fork and knife food. Yeah. Sometimes. It can get a little messy. Yeah. Um, it's okay, but like, yeah, I, I think enchiladas for me. Okay. What about you? For me, I think it's going to be the tostada. You like tostada? Like, they're not bad. They just... There's love with tostada. That's why I think so. I, I I've, 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 had, I've had good ones. I haven't been whelmed yet okay. by a tostada. Like, it's just been like, oh, that's nice. But it's never like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I would eat this again. Like, I've tried them several times, and I'm just I'm like, okay. Okay. Like, I haven't been wowed. It hasn't, it hasn't, it hasn't whelmed me. So I, th- yeah. I think there's different levels of tostada. Yeah, maybe I just haven't had the right one yet. But like at this juncture, if I was presented with those those four options, I would probably go towards the other three and leave the tostadas off to the side because it's just it hasn't whelmed me yet. Yeah, because so, like some tostadas, they're just boring. They're just like an open mm-hmm. taco, right? It's yeah. Like, it's like, so it's like I understand if it's just an open taco. I'm like, yeah, I'll just have a taco. But um, I th- I think that uh, if you um, I think a good a good one. That's that just an open taco. Mm-hmm. Might be better. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe I just haven't had the right one yet. But yeah. 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 So what you love it? What you love it? Um, enchiladas, quesadillas. Yeah, like pr- 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 probably quesadillas. Okay. Yeah, Qu- quesadillas are just. It's it's good. Um, some of them are very filling, mm-hmm. and it's secure. It's not messy. Yeah. You can, and you can kind of take it and go. Yeah. Like some 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 make quesadillas a little more messy than others, mm. but like mo- on, on the most part, it can it needs to go. And like 
you can never go wrong with a quesadilla. Mm-hmm. I think my um my friend, shout out to Ashley, told me that she was like when she was in college, she was always like, get the quesadillas wherever you go and you'll be fine. I was like, spell it. It's almost always a win. Yeah, the quesadillas always work. There's never it's never like you go somewhere the quesadillas are bad. I've had some meh quesadillas in my in my time, but for the most part they do their job. Yeah. They do their job. It's, 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 it is the safest option. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's, it's safer than a burger sometimes. Yeah. Because the burger's dicey. Yeah. You would think it wouldn't be because everyone eats burgers. But yeah. It doesn't always get it, what it's supposed it to is, have. It is the safe option. Muy safe. Very, very safe. Very safe. Yeah. Um, I think my lover is going to be my newly discovered Sheila Keyless. Their joints is banging. <laughs> they are so good. Like, I think the first night. You like it, nachos, so I guess it's kind of like on that. Yeah. Like, apparently, I was reading up on them. Apparently, it's the official Mexican hangover food um, to help you to help you get through that um, point of that, that, that experience. I, I get that because, like, Americans do nachos. Yeah. So, it's like. So, I guess chili They is the, are delicious. Okay. I got I think, some, I, think I think they're only po- not popular in America because Americans can't say it. That's fine. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it's only Because I feel like I don't really see them anywhere in America, but let me tell you something. Chili quites. <laughs> I had some, I think they had some on, like, uh, what was it? Either Friday night or Saturday night, they had some in the, uh, in the, in the buffet place for dinner. And I had them, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. And then this morning, we ordered breakfast to the room, and they brought us part of someone else's order. And they had chilaquiles, and I was like, on the key of high, if you insist that I keep this... <laughs> I I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna bound I'm gonna eat up these chili I'm gonna eat them. So just let me know what y'all want to do because I wanted to eat them. I think I'm gonna have to get some for breakfast tomorrow before we before we leave. Chili kids. They're so good. Oh my god. They're so good. Okay. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say quesadillas. Okay. I normally would, but they're delicious. Okay. Delicious. Just it's it's all things that you like about Mexican food, like on a thing. Also, I don't think I'm eating Mexican food again if it's not in Mexico because. Yeah. Or California or Texas, which is also like Mexico adjacent. Um, yeah. Because what they be serving us, it, it's not giving what it's supposed to give. Yeah. And um, like you can c- taste the difference. Like, and coming here has we reunited her new love for mojitos. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Cause she, cause like I, I remember I got a mojito and she was kind of like, I mean, okay. And she had it. She's like, oh, tell, tell me more, tell me more of these mojitos. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> um, let me just, let me just get one though. Like literally, been drinking this all week. They're great. Um, I think my guy Bel May, he made the best ones. Yes, I haven't seen him yet. Yeah, I ain't That's... seen him since. Maybe Bel May went on vacation. You know, he deserves. But. Them margaritas he made, them them mojitos he made. I was like, this is the best mojito I've ever had in my life. <laughs> like in my life. Like, yeah, I was I, like, I was like, I'm about to be here for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been very vibey. It's been very vibey. Uh, just you know, just it's been a good time. It's been a good time. Like <laughs> yeah, everything's been. We, good. We're doing a lot of mojitos and margaritas. It's yeah, to, it's yeah. Good. Like the, this, like this mojito currently doesn't have any mint in it. Because the, the bar I got it from didn't have mint, and I was deeply disappointed. Yeah. But the guy was like, I can make it for you without the mint. I was like, I'll just, I'm here for the alcohol anyway, so I'll just, yeah, I'll well, just have it. It's not, it's not the same. But. It's not the same, but I didn't want a margarita, so yeah. here we are. So yeah, because yeah. like sometimes a frozen margarita is cool until it melts. Yeah, and then it gets sweet and syrupy and weird. Yeah. And there's also like potential brain freeze if you drink it too fast, so it's just, it's complicated. Yeah. And I know we were doing a podcast, so it constantly melting was just ruined the whole margarita. Very unattractive. Very unattractive. So yeah, that was our segment of Love It or Lose It. Hey, love it or lose it. Love it or lose it. Hey, love it or lose it. Hey, 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 Shaba. Shaba. So yeah, yeah. This week, what's our topic for this week? Uh, yes. 
So Mark showed me this video while we were in the airport on the way to Mexico. And it was this young lady, I can't remember her name, but we watch her all the time because she does um, a lot of like the reaction videos to the Marvel series and stuff like that. Um, she's on TikTok and she's also on YouTube, I believe, but I can't think of her um, name at this very moment. But she posted a video, like a 12 minute video, talking about how being a- She, she does rants every once in a while. And she does rants and stuff like that every once in a while. And he showed me, I think, one of her rants where she was talking about what being- Nick Mar Marina. Huh? Nick Mar Marina. Nick Mar Marina, that's her name. Yeah, she's, she's from New York, actually. She's, she's a New Yorker? Yeah, she's Nike Marina. She was from, she's from uh, New York, as Mark said. She was in the Air Force. Yes. I think she was at one point, and then she, like, left and, you know, is doing, you know, uh, entertainment industry stuff. Uh, videos, TikTok, YouTube, like I said, whatever the case may be. And she posted a video, uh, like, four days ago, um, talking about what it's like to be a gifted and talented child and how that like leads to issues and anxiety for you later on in life. And we want, we want to talk about that today because I too relate to young sis uh, with the whole gifted and talented kid narrative. So in the yeah. video, hmm? no, 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 no. no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was saying, I was like, the um, the video was basically saying like how like, Sometimes, many times, many times when like we have children, um, and like they're known as like either being in the top of the class or being known as being gifted or being known as smart mm -hmm. or being like like getting a lot of exposure. I, I think it kind of goes. I think probably goes hand in hand with like the childhood celebrity mm -hmm. and kind of like like all those little things that like you kind of put on the child. Sometimes what we do is we as we we take away their childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, many times because um, we're trying to get them to um, stay up to a certain standard because like what will happen is when, when once we find out that um, our child is like sometimes looks like they're doing better than other people we're, like they'll say like oh you got to challenge them more mm -hmm. and like we'll do that and then like they won't and then like so they're constantly fighting to get to a certain goal they're trying to they they're like their whole goal t turns to be like all right now i need to be better be better and it's always like a competition with everything mm -hmm. and like she was saying like how at age eight she was kind of like all right i need to be doing this by age 14 and by age 14 she's like i need to do this by age 17 and, eight, and by 17 i need to do this by like there's always like i need to be fighting for this because i have to, i can't disappoint people mm -hmm. around me yeah. and i can't i i have to show that i'm doing great good because they have so much um pressure on me mm -hmm. to, for me to do great because I, i've been told i was gifted and talented yeah and like it's it's like it's and how like it's very anxiety inducing mm -hmm. <laughs> um how it, if if it makes um people make um, a lot of times people go through that they're kind of like they don't they're, they're not allowed to be a child like a lot of times like people say like oh you can't really play with your friends like that paying your friend is not really important focus on your studies and everything mm -hmm. like that so like they they become very like less social yeah. than they, they could because they're, fo they're focused on their grades they're like oh i don't need to worry about my grades i'm doing what school yeah so like like they they, they grew up to be like very anti-social mm -hmm. <laughs> and not and not good it's like being in social anxiety adults mm -hmm. in that matter yeah um for me like the whole thing was very not triggering, because that's not the right word, but it, I guess the, the the best description is that it was very familiar. Like, I res a lot of it resonated with me, because I went to school, excuse me, sorry, in Barbados, and the British, you know, colonial remnants of how the educational system is set up are still present. And one of the things that happens is that when you're in school, you basically get ranked um, in your class every grading period, term, whatever it is. I don't remember how many terms. I don't know if it's trimester, I don't remember anymore. But you basically get ranked. And so there's someone who's first based on average, second, third, all the way down to how many other people's in class, 25th or whatever. And, you know, I guess I was one of those kids who was quote unquote gifted and talented. 
So um, I always was in like the first, second, third, or fourth of my like class group. And it was like me and like three other girls that kept fighting back and forth, not fighting, but like we would be in competition with each other to get first, second, third, or fourth in the class. Like anything lower than fourth was unacceptable. Like it just wasn't, it wasn't a thing that was gonna go. So like, you know, it was me, what, what were their names? I remember it was Rhea, Crystal, I think Keisha and me. I think it was the four of us that were always going back and forth. And so, um, you know, there was that pressure of like, if you're not gonna be in the top five of the class basically, and fifth wasn't even really an option, like what were you doing? And you know, I realized looking back, like that was a lot of stress for me to be like worrying about that at like age six or seven. Like, is that what I should have been thinking about at that age? Really? I don't know. In some ways I think, you know, that, intense focus and that desire to be the best of the best has helped me a lot in life in terms of like my mental fortitude and my ability to kind of like push forward even when things are challenging but I'm like did I need that level of anxiety at that age I don't really know could I just not have been a kid like because I remember being like three years old and sitting like my grandfather had like a a blackboard like with uh, chairs and a table and chalk set up in like the garage area of our house. And I would sit there and he would teach me like my timetables and my letters and my numbers and all this stuff. And I'm like, so when I got to school, when I was four, like I think they had me sitting in the class with the six year olds because the fours were just learning that stuff and I already knew it, so I was bored. So they had me sitting in the class with the kids, you know, that were, I guess I was on their academic level or whatever the case is and it's like, I always felt like I had to, like my identity was wrapped up in me being academically gifted. Um, apparently I was good at public speaking, so they started having me do stuff in church and at school, like reciting poems and reading things and blah, 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 blah. And it's like this constant pressure to be like the best of the best was like always there. And in Barbados, and I'm sure in some of the other English speaking islands, I know Trinidad, Jamaica, some of the others do it in order to move on to like our version of high school or middle school slash high school, I guess, you have to take an exam. It used to be called the uh, 11 plus when I was a kid. It, it might've changed the name, but the Islanders who know, know. And basically you take this test when you're 11 or 10 going on 11. And based on your scores, it determines what secondary school in the island you'll go to. I started taking extra lessons after school for that when I was like eight. I didn't have to take it till I was 11, but I was taking extra lessons at eight. So in addition to my regular schoolwork, in addition to what I was doing at home with my grandfather, I was also spending two to three extra hours, I think like two or three times per week at school, after school, preparing to take this test. I did well. I got into the school that I wanted to, which is the best one in the island. There are some others who will say differently, but Queens College is the best one grand opening, grand closing. But did I need that level of anxiety at that age? Like I remember like studying for that test and even I remember how I felt taking that test. Like I was like, oh my God, my whole future rides on this test. If I don't do well, oh my God, I might have to go to foundation, which is not a bad school. It's just not the school that I felt that my, my skills were capable of. And like, I just remember having mad anxiety taking the test having mad anxiety after taking the test and just being mad anxious about like when the results came out. And it was just like, I can kind of look back at it, chuckle a little bit, but did I need to be that anxious as a 10 year old, 11 year old? Like, did I? Not, probably not, probably not. And you know, like what you said, I don't feel like I was necessarily encouraged to like, be social with other kids. What are you doing? Oh. What? Did... I lost my thought. <laughs> you, I don't know if you were encouraged to be social with other kids. Yes. I didn't know if I was encouraged to be like really social with other kids or be friendly with other kids. 
and because it was like it was only certain kids I could talk to. <laughs> like it was it was the kids who were like the other smart kids. Like those kids were cool. The other ones that were like, yeah, not so much. But it's like none of those kids like were like in the neighborhood with me. So it was like I would only see them at school. And so it's just like I don't know if my ability to form friendships with other people was nurtured or or developed as it should have been as a kid and so I find like into my adulthood I feel like I've had challenges doing that like I don't have a problem talking to people and getting to know people it's the like making friends and staying friends with people part that I think I have a challenge with as an adult as a result of that kind of hyper focus on what I'm doing, what my work is about, and I have time, I'll, I'll have time for friends or relationships with people later. And it's like, that leads to its own levels of anxiety about like, am I being a good friend to someone? Am I being a bad friend? Whatever the case is. So it's just kind of like, it was interesting what, what the video had to say because it's like, you always have this sense of, there's something else I have to be chasing. There's something else I have to be aspiring to. Like, I'm not doing enough. I'm not enough. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, was, it was interesting to watch. It really was. Um, and, like, and I, I, I actually, when I, when I was watching, I was thinking about um, how did it feel for you? Like, I, I, I wasn't, I was always, like, the, 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 the lower A, B, C student. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't the, I wasn't like the top of the class. I, I I think like I um. I used to ha- have honor rolls back in like certain schools and everything, mm-hmm. but like I was never I never ha- like I I never had that pressure, mm-hmm. right? So like I it's not a it's not a something I I think about in terms of like my parents pressuring me to have a certain standard. Mm-hmm. Um. So like I, it was it was it was interesting to listen to and like I I know that like it's it's one of those things that people don't think about because people are quick to it it's, it's kind of like people think it's kind of like the uh, the the anger of the privilege mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like people treat that like that mm-hmm. as like oh but you have you have everything so you like. If you when when you have if when you have something that people don't have, mm-hmm. people tend to discount everything that you go through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's like what they do with um people who are good in sports. Mm-hmm. It's like if you're good at this, I want to be good at this. So let me I'm going to discount you and what you're and um any trials you're going through because you're going you have something I don't have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like like it's, it's what they do with like the um a lot of the. But like people in sports and stuff like that, like it's, it was just annoying. Yeah, because like everybody has their own things they're dealing with. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it it's it's weird. Yeah, it like it makes it hard. Like in addition to what I said about like just making friends with other people, not being encouraged so much. That like ladder that not that ladder that pedestal that people put you on when you're like the smart one or the gifted one or the talented one or the whatever you want to call it. Adults don't realize it, but it makes other kids hate you. Like other kids are like, Oh, because this adult said this, or this adult is telling this kid, you need to be more like Kristen. You need to like, it's now creating a situation where that kid hates me because they think that I have something that they don't have. And so that, I'm better than them or I think I'm better than them somehow. And so like, I feel like I experienced a lot of bullying as a kid growing up because adults inadvertently made other people feel like they, they weren't, they didn't have nothing to offer or they didn't have as much going on as I did. And so it was like, it was hard for me to like make friends with people like I dealt with a lot of like kids and girls particularly who like just didn't like me and were very mean to me because and it wasn't because of anything I did it was because the adults around us were like 
showing me a certain level of, I don't know, attention, praise, whatever that they weren't showing them. And so that inadvertently created an uncomfortable experience for me as a teenager. Yeah, and, and like, I know it's it's common for parents to be like, oh, who cares about other people? What you need to worry about yourself. It, it's not a real thing as an adult. Yeah. You can't, like, stop trying, like, this mindset of be by yourself and just go hard, it's just, it does not work as an adult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does not work. So, like, but... It's it's hard to try to learn how to be social. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's, yeah, it's just, just it's, really hard. It's, it's just more work. Yeah. It's just more work because you're like, you know, and like I realize like a lot of a lot of um. Black parents teach their kids that in general mm -hmm. of like don't worry about your friends. Right. Um. And like, I understand it to a certain degree because it's like you don't want people like to like bring you down like right. or like when I say bring you down I mean like distract you from what you're doing like if someone else around you is not doing what they're supposed to do you want you don't want them to encourage you not do what you're supposed to do exactly but i don't think that's the same thing as don't be social right and don't be social and like training your child to look down on others exactly like exactly. Those, those two things that kind of like you have to be mindful all, also of and i think those two things i don't think people think about yeah because i'm like i'm thinking like even like in in my school like they they classified uh, us by like they broke us up in classes like the smarter kids were in this class like the in the middle okay ones were in this class and you kind of knew where you stood based on which class you were in so it was just kind of like that's already creating a divide between us and then it's like the parents of the ones over here feel like they should only mix with the ones over here and not the ones over there so it's just kind of like. <sighs> Yeah. It, B, B, B or C students are not trash students. No, they just be a, like that, that, it just be everybody else. Yes, like <laughs> it's, it's just it's just most of us. Like academics is not the be all and end all of the world. Like there are there are plenty of things that I am trash at, can't do, and that's okay. It yeah. doesn't mean that I'm any less diminished. Like I like we we like no one has it all. Like we all have like areas where we're gifted talented whatever and we all have areas where it's like that's just not our ministry yeah. in life and that's okay and that doesn't mean that we have to treat other people who don't have this particular thing as their ministry as if they're less than or they don't have anything to contribute like that's yeah that's kind of rude but it's like i feel i feel like i, I sometimes wonder like what what would my childhood have been like had I just had a regular experience where I wasn't being like firmly pushed towards down this path of academic excellence or whatever you want to call it. Like what, would I have a easier time like making friends because I feel like the experiences that I had have ultimately made me very untrustworthy of people mm -hmm. in general. And, you know, I didn't really think about it until like you know years after the fact of like why am i so hesitant about other people and it's because you know growing up i felt like i didn't know who i could trust or who was really my friend because i did have a situation where it was like i thought that this group of girls was like trying to be my friends and then ultimately like they were just trying to be my friends so they could figure out like stuff to bully me with which they did end up doing for like I don't know, it felt like a good year that they were being like really facetious and bullying me. And so it's just kind of like my trust issues probably developed from there. And like, I just wonder like if I was allowed to or given the opportunity to come across more like a regular person as opposed to this example on a pedestal that you should be aspiring to, like, would my ability to like connect with people be different? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But I do I did resonate with the the pressure that you feel because I'm like I feel like for myself like people from the outside looking in would probably be like, "Oh, you've accomplished a great deal in life. You've done a lot." But I feel like I don't feel that way. I feel like I'm like I'm I don't feel, like, satisfied, I guess. I'm like, 
okay, so I did that. Okay, cool. Like, what's next? What's next? What's next? Like, I'm like, I'm always like, there's a next, there's a next, there's a next. And I'm like, well, will there ever be a point where I finally feel like I can relax? Yeah, I, I was, can, I was I like, can, you... I can celebrate or appreciate or like live in the moment of what I have because I feel like you always feel like, are you living up to to the expectations that of, people have set on you yes. before, from yeah before? Because I do think I'm like, if my grandparents were still alive, would they be proud? Would they feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do based on what they put into me. Like, what would they be? Would they be pleased? Like, would they be? Would they feel comfortable? Would they think, oh, nah, you're not doing this. Oh, nah, like, I, like I think about that stuff because it's like, I, I've just always, I guess, carried that, that like, internalized pressure around with me and even though if I sit down and do like a real life accounting of what I've done in life I can say I've done a lot more than most but I think because of the the kind of like the the people I like grew up with and the kind of people that I was around are sort of doing very similar things like we're all doing very similar things and in similar places in life. And so it's just like, but is this it though? Like, is, is, have we arrived quote unquote? Have we achieved whatever it is that we were working hard for all those years back when we were eight, nine, 10? Like what, like, you know, what's weird. Like, I feel like we've been, we were pushed towards getting something, but I don't think we ever had a clear idea of what the thing was. And so I think that's where the, the discrepancy comes from. We're like, we've been working hard to something. But I don't think we were ever clear on what it was to begin with. So it's like, how do you know you're there? You know, you know what's weird about, like, how we work towards? Um, I feel as if, like, for instance, most people, um, they fight for their children to be lawyers, doctors, mm -hmm. um, certain education, even maybe even technology, um, mm -hmm. stuff like that and everything. Um, and those are people who... I guess, I guess the reason why because of the consistency. Mm -hmm. it, like it, it's the most, it's the highest consistent paycheck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I guess, one of those. I, it, it, there are those it, industries where it's like it's the highest. It's cons very consistent. It's very constant. Like and, and, it, and it's it, very unlikely that there's going to be some upheaval that's going to tear the whole I, thing down. I, I, I would not even say the highest consistent person. I, I would Excuse say me. it's the highest you know where the trajectory is going. You know where it's going. Like mm -hmm. if I become a lawyer. I'm going to do this, 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 and mm -hmm. this. What I might do is be on my own practice, but there's still a path. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like it's just, it's just, it's, it's just a set path. Mm -hmm. um, doctor, same thing. Mm -hmm. Hospital, hospital. I might have my own practice, but mm -hmm. it's still a yeah. set path. Right. Um. So, like, I, I feel as if even in education, it's like set path. Like the, the like even if, even even with um education, still the limit is still the prince is the president of the college. It's still mm -hmm. like that's what cut off is. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, the interesting thing is, um, based off American standards in terms of salaries and like based off things, the real success of people are the people who are doing things with more chance. Mm -hmm. That's what's interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's that's, that's 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 why it's weird to me. Yeah. Because like most of the things that like that um do most of the things that you can get do well, especially in America, is is the most, things where you're. It, it, they, there are We're more taking big chances. More, more, more yeah. ch it's more, it's more chance driven. Yeah, economy, which, which, which is why, like, they always. That's why they always say, like, um, the working hard is kind of a nonsense thing with um things. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's 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 very chance driven. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not just working hard. It's yeah. working hard and opportunity. Yeah, and that's and that's why, like, it's it's a big thing. Like, because because no, no one could tell me that the people who like do cleaning services don't work harder than me. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure they work harder than me. Yeah. People who work in hotels probably work harder than me. Mm -hmm. Like, like they they work harder. So working harder is not the thing. Yeah. Um, the work it's working. Um, it's taking a chance on certain things mm -hmm. and not being safe and stuff like that. Yeah. Because but not being safe means that it can go it can go wrong. Right. And you need to have a safety net for that reason. So yeah. it's like, so it's like it's it's a it's a it's a weird thing. Yeah, it is. I agree. I agree. It's it's 
Cause like I understand why parents do it because it's like that's the one with the, with the easiest safety net. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, because no no parent like ultimately I think most parents want their kids to have a life that's less stressful. Correct. Than the one they have, so they feel like if I can encourage my kid to go towards what's considered a quote unquote stable, respected career, then at least they won't have the same like financial worries or whatever the case is that I had raising them. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's a thing. But also, you know, they might become more financially successful by starting an app or yeah something like that. But it's just, you know, and I think too, you know, at the, at the head of all of this is always hmm, racist and colonialism yeah. mashed together that kind of put our community in this place where we're not, we don't intend to be limiting, but because of how the cards are stacked against black people, we, we tend like, to be safe. We, we, we try to be as safe as possible yeah. with a lot of the things that, that we do. And so. Because, because there's, there's, there's two like strong um, ways of thought many mm-hmm. times. It's the, very strong start your own business try things out Mm -hmm. and a very strong um get a bunch of certificates and just do a bunch of um uh things in the service industry Mm -hmm. like one one side says start your own business and like just try to invest in a bunch of things and Mm -hmm. like they go very hard with that Mm -hmm. and they say like you need to invest 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 Mm -hmm. right the other side is like you need to get your plumber's license and your yeah. <laughs> your construction license and do all the bunch of things so you have a bunch of skills to do a bunch of things and mm-hmm. that's how you make it yeah. and everything. So it, it, it's, and both it's sides weird. have merit. Yeah, they both have both have valid valid um, things to say on both sides. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I it, but you know it, this whole conversation kind of makes me wonder like because sometimes I feel like I'm not doing enough with Avery because I was like going way harder with like the reading and the academic stuff when I was her age and I'm like but she's three like does she need to be sitting down for an hour two hours a day like after having a full day of school or activities at daycare or whatever the case is to do that like does she need that like does she does she like I I don't know like, a part of me feels like I want to, but then a part of me is like, but it's not like she's not learning anything. It's not like she's not being engaged. Like, we read books. We talk to her. We go over her numbers and her letters. Like, we do that stuff with her. But it's like, I sometimes wonder, like, should I be doing it all regimented? Like, my grandfather did it, where it's like, I went to school, and then I came home, and then I did this, and then I did that. Like, do I need to be doing that? Or, like, is it better for me to just let her be a kid like does she does she have to be in the gifted and talented programs at school does she have to like do I see the merit in those things and the opportunities that they can like present and the doors they can open absolutely yes I see it but like a part of me is also like but her mental health though like (laughs) but her mental health but her development but like I, I, I think I believe. So I go back and forth. Her mental health rubbish. and social development is very important to us. Yes, I think yes. It, it's just very important to us of, of her um, being um, socially together, happy, and like like th- those things matter a right. lot. Right. Um. Like being happy means a lot. <laughs> it matters a lot more. Like a lot. I think that that goes. I think um, people trying to put that on the back burner, like, oh, you'll be happy after you right get it. But I'm like. So they'll be happy at 21. Right. I'm like, and how will they know what happy is? <laughs> what, is? what does happy mean for them? How will they define that? How will they know what that means? Because like that, that way, what you're saying never usually happens. If, no. you, if you talk to anybody who went through that, they're not at 21 like this. Okay, I'm happy now. No. Like you don't, they, they don't get the job. They're like, all right, I'm happy now. Right. They're still fighting to right. reach, reach a, exactly. a goal that's not real. Right. And, that's, and that's, that's the kind of point I'm trying to make. It's like, I feel like I have been working my whole life to get to something and by some standards I have gotten there in my head I don't feel that way and it's like 
how will I know? Like, what if at the end of what this is, I still don't feel that? What now? Mm -hmm. Like, because in my head, like, you know, long story short, my, my goal that I decided in my head was having a doctoral degree. So it's like, okay, I've done some things. Now I'm at the point where one is within grasp. Like, will I finally be quote unquote happy or fulfilled when it finally happens? Or will I be like, okay, they give those to everyone and be, be, because Mark gets annoyed every time I say they give master's degrees to everyone, because they do. But um, when, when people be like, oh my God, you got two masters, I'd be like, girl, mad people do. But apparently, no one cares about that. So it's just kind of like, I'm not, I don't think I'm a bum, but I'm not satisfied with that. So it's like, now that I'm going for like, what's quote unquote consider the ultimate terminal, whatever, like when that's over, will I finally feel yeah, that, like I, I have. I, mean, I was telling you, I was like, you, you have gotten you, what it is I'm supposed to get. Like I was I saying, like, you, you might like what to, does that look like? What does it feel like? I don't know. You might have to like. I, I was saying, like, you might be, might be better to go to therapy at that time, so you so you'll be able to appreciate it by the time it happens. Yeah. Because if not, you you will be going through the same thing again. Yes. Because I I feel that way about like a lot of things in my life where it's just like and you, I, you'll get it. And you kind of like. Eh. Okay. But there's but there's something else. But there's something else. I, have, I you haven't reached it yet. Yeah. And so it's just kind of like I, I probably need to like go sit down and talk to somebody about about that because I think this whole like this pressure that I felt since I was a kid being quote unquote the gifted and talented like it's never really let up like every single thing that I can think of that I've said I wanted to achieve or have or do like it's happened one way or another, sometimes it might have not gone the way I, I thought it would or taken the route I thought it would, but I got there. And it's still like, mm, I don't know. And so, you know, I, I've been thinking about that a lot and that, that video really kind of helped put into perspective for me, you know, that a lot of what my feelings are and like why I have this kind of like, uh immediate impulse to sort of downplay or like brush aside what I what the things I have accomplished is in part due to this overwhelming sense of pressure I feel to be like the tippity top 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 of everything and if I'm not then I won't you won't even try. I won't even try. Like, there's a lot of things in life I won't do simply because I'm not the best at it. And I know that that's bad. It might be immature. I might be shutting myself out of a lot of opportunities to grow and learn as a person. But, like, because, of, because I've been labeled gifted, whatever you want to call it, a lot of, there are a lot of things that come very easy to me. And so it's like, if something doesn't come easy... I'm immediately like, well, maybe it's not something I need to do or maybe this or maybe that. Like, and so it's like, how many things have I inadvertently closed the door on simply because I might need to try a little harder and like a regular person would. Um, so it's just, it's a lot of tangled-ish in there. But I think, you know, by and large, there is something that is potentially stunting um, to a person's growth when we start kind of categorizing and pushing them into these boxes like so early in life. Word. Yeah. But go to therapy, people. Yes. Go to therapy. And if anybody has any therapist recommendations, I'll let the kids. Because I need to go to one. I need to like start appreciating my life and stuff and stop being so like, oh my God, I'm a yeah. bum. And also just be mindful of the pressure you put on your children. Yes. Also be mindful of the pressure you put on your children. Like let them be kids. You only get to be a kid one time in life. Like yeah. one time. And particularly for black kids, the time is even shorter because the rest of society thinks you're older than you are even when you're like seven. Yeah. So... The, the, yeah. the, the problem is, is a lot of times 
the people who are encouraging their kids when they find out they're gifted and talented, they weren't that um, before. So in their mind, they're like, "Nah, you got, you have, you you you, you have, have an opportunity. You have opportunities I didn't have. So we're gonna op- we're gonna explore every opportunity that you can have that I mm, I was that I, that I never got the opportunity, which I understand. But yeah, which but is it, valid. I get it. Yeah, but like you have to let them be a child. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Are you moving? Yes, I'm ready to move on. All right. There is no artist spotlight. There's no artist spotlight because because I don't want them to cut us off. Yeah. And we ain't got nothing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. we'll move on. Yeah, we're gonna move on. Uh, so this is gonna be a short podcast because yeah. we in Mexico and we didn't really. We just, we just want to give y'all something. Yeah, just want to give a little content. Nothing too crazy, but like we we vacationing. We ain't got time. Yeah. Um. So just a few things. This uh, week in random. So um, if you have been following the news a little bit, which I have, um, the people over at um the Taliban. The Taliban. Yes. They have now taken over um. Afghanistan again, which was expected, which was expected. And apparently their president boogied when the takeover happened. He said, I'm going to be on my uh, aircraft as on the way out of here, which a lot of people did. A lot of people left like a lot, like, because I was like, sir, you're just going to leave people so, dead. So, so this, this, this is, this is, this is the, um, do, do you know, do you know, like the whole thing that's happening? So the get, whole, th- get, break it down. So the whole thing that's happening is basically we were over there for the wrong reasons. Yeah, we should never right. been over there. <laughs> For the first place. Mm-hmm. But, like, our goal was to end terror. There was no real end goal. Mm-hmm. What the, what they, so the what, Taliban been there the whole time. They yeah. ain't going nowhere. What we said we were supposed to do was we were supposed to, like, train the people who were there. Yes. To do things on their own. Yes. And then leave. Yes. But I guess there's money in being there because we just stayed. We yeah. we're, we're, weren't doing a lot of training. Yes. Like we trained them. So, well, we, so, well, so we now. We trained them, but I don't know how lengthy or effective or effective or training, the cases was. training yeah. was. So it was that number one. So like, it, it training should be effective enough that when we leave, it doesn't hurt that much. Right. But the fact that the Taliban took over since we left means that we weren't doing it much. We we're, weren't we're, we're gradually letting them handle things. Mm-hmm. Right. And there were like a lot of people who were translators mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That are like, yo, we've been getting threatened this whole time, but we've been cool because y'all are here. Mm-hmm. Can, can you let us back into America now? Can you come, let us come? In? So a lot, lot, lot of them like this, yo, we come with you. Right. Because they, they're going to kill us as soon as you leave. Right. So let us go with yes. you, please. For, be back. Be back. For power. Because it's violent. Like, these people only... And like, all the Taliban was doing was just like playing the waiting game. Yeah. There was like, we're just going to wait till you get out. Because yeah. you can't stay here forever. Right. And when you leave, we in there. We that that is it. That's, that's, we, we're, we're just playing the waiting game. Grand opening, grand closing. I, I, th- I think they're actually, he spoke about this on um, Hood Politics. Mm-hmm. And he was like, nah, sometimes you, like, I think he was, he was talking about with the, um, in reference to the, uh, the um, filibuster too. Mm-hmm. Like the same thing. Like he was like, I think he used the example. He was like, you know, when, um, when you are in trouble with your mother, mm-hmm. right? And like, you know, you when they, when they get home, they're going to be in trouble. He's like, the best thing to do is to keep them talking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you're like this, hey, I did this. What's going on? How was your day? Because <laughs> he, like, you don't want them to remember. You don't want them to come and talk to the, you know, the parent. And get it. So you're like, keep them, keep them abreast. Like, all right, just wait it out because at a certain time, I'll be good. Mm-hmm. So like, the concept is basically like, Taliban is like, all right, we're, we're just going to be here. We'll wait. As soon as you're done, we, we, we step we'll, up. we'll come in. Because the same we'll 20 it. years you spend in teaching them people, we spend in 20 years preparing on how to take over yeah, when y'all like, get out as, of here. As soon as you out, we in there. Mm-hmm. And then we here. Yeah. And, then, and, 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 and so, like, think about it this way. Like, people in Afghanistan is like, some people are kind of like, here, but they're kind of like, yo, when you leave, Taliban going to be here, so I might as well join the Taliban. <laughs> right. <laughs> because, I mean, like, at least I'll be safe. Right. Survival. And you're not even from here. Mm-hmm. So let me, at, least, at least let me just join them because at least I, I, it's just it's just a game of survival. It's like it's not really good or evil. It's just like just you 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 don't, you're not even from here. You don't care about us. Yeah. So these people at least here. Right. So you know what I'm saying so. It, it's there a, it's are advantages a, to being in Taliban. Yeah, like it's it, it's a it's a weird like we we keep thinking about it from our our perspective and not from mm-hmm. how that how the citizens are. Yeah. And like I I, I think. I think for every situation, no matter what it is, just be always be in favor of the citizens. Mm-hmm. That is it. <laughs> you don't have to be in favor of the politics, the government. Yeah. 
I will be in favor of the people who are innocent people who are in the situation. Yeah. And I think I'm always in favor of them. Yeah. I'm in favor of the, of the Afghans who are innocently just trying to live their life. Right. I'm sure. in favor of whoever's innocently just trying to live their life in, any, in every conflict. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's, that's what's going on over there. Uh, uh, some, you know, some people feel like the exit strategy was not done in the best way. Um, it, it's bad because it's kind of like they should have put out great plan, but like now, but now everybody's saying like, oh, we shouldn't be there. We got to pull out. So I was like, all right, I'm pull out. And they're like, great. But like now it's gonna be trash because like it's, it, it, it's weird because it's like we can't keep spending money there. Yeah. To be over there. Yeah. But we like it's it's all our fault, and that's basically it's, it's, what Biden said. He basically was like, "We can't keep we can't keep staying over there and fighting indefinitely on a conflict that is not in the national interest of the United States, but, or doubling down on a civil war in a foreign foreign country." Like, but but it is all our fault. Yes, like we, we did start that. We did. We, we did, and we started from before that. Like we 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 didn't want to put Bin Laden in the first place. Yeah, we gave him the money in the first place. So like we kind of created this whole conflict. Yes, we're the ones who like gave like you say we created the conflict. Yes. So we were there and, to like, so it's like, it's, it's, it's the, technically the, our fault. The training and the, and the, and the weapons and the whatever that, you know, we brought over there to train the Afghani army. A lot of that stuff is now in Taliban hands. So they, so it's like, we, so, we, so like we, we, it's, we've it's, it's, it's a to, weird, it's a weird time. Cause like we created the problem. <laughs> yeah. So now it's a problem. It's like, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. Yeah. It just, it's, it's not looking good. It's, it's not. It's not really a, a simple. Us. It's not really a simple solution. Yeah, but no matter what, not. no matter what, it's our fault though. Grand opening, grand closing. Yeah, I'm saying that the president of Afghanistan said, "Oh wow, that's crazy. I'm a, I'm a head out." As he should. I mean, and you know, in you know, he saw. I guess he saw <laughs> the president of Haiti get assassinated. Rest in peace to him. To uh, I think his name is President Moise. Saw him get assassinated. He said, "I won't be next. I'm. Let me get on out of here. I'm boogieing out of here. Um, but I don't know where he went. Uh." They, but they say different countries are going to be taking in um, some of the Afghan refugees. Uganda is going to take some. Um, some other African countries are going to take some because, you know, the people, they're trying to get out of there. So I think, you know, the U.S., whoever was still there has now secured the airport because there was something going on where people couldn't get in or out. Didn't nobody know what was going on. So I think now they've secured the airport and they're anticipating flying out five to 9,000 people, according to the reports, uh, per day, per week, whatever the case is, to get people out of there who need to leave. So we'll see how that goes. It's good times. Yeah, good times. Uh, in other, quote, unquote, good times, uh, but not really good times. Uh, so Haiti got hit by another earthquake on, what was it, Saturday or Sunday? Um, I feel like they were still recovering from the last one. The last three. Yeah, and then... Can you leave them alone? Like, France got to give Haiti back their money. Um, because here's the thing, um, Japan is all, and, okay, so let me start over. France got to give Haiti back that money that they paid, that Haiti paid them for reparations because Japan also sits on a tectonic plate like Haiti. And while they do have earthquakes, they're often not as devastating because they are a richer country. And they have the money. With the to, money and the resources. To have to, stronger buildings. To strengthen their situation. Yeah. So that when earthquakes do come, it's not as catastrophic as it is for Haiti. Correct. So I'm going to need France to give the Haitian people their money back. So they can take that money and invest in making the infrastructure of their country sturdier. So that when earthquakes do come. And, and tsunamis and all And them. tsunamis and all the other things yeah. that come. They, ha they can protect themselves. They can protect themselves. Because. The, the 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 narrative for reasons unknown to me that still keeps running is that Haiti keeps having earthquakes and things happen because they do voodoo and they're devil worshippers. And No, it's because they're they're a poor country and it's because they're 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 not a poor country. No, they're they're a I, country that is that is that is being economically disenfranchised. Yeah. I I, I, use, I use the wrong yes. term. Yes, no, I understand what you mean. Like, yeah. it's a term that everybody uses, but it's like, let's, you know, like, they're not a poor country. It's a very rich country. Yeah. It's just economically disenfranchised. Yes. A lot of mismanagement, whatever the case is. That being said, um, let's think about it for a second. If they were, 
if they were devil worshiping, would the devil not at some point interject and, and stop the earthquake from happening if they were really doing devil worship and that was that was really the vibe? Like that was going on? Like the devil couldn't intervene at some point? Because if, if I'm going to be worshiping somebody, I need them to be able to it's, intervene. Yeah. It's not devil worship. Oh, to do something. It's, it's, right. I'm just telling you what the people said because <laughs> that's, that's what the people had said. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's not devil worship. That's, it's kind of dry. It's it's not. It's um, not. like yeah. every time something happens in Haiti or New Orleans, the first thing some of the super saints go to is devil worshiping. Or I don't know, perhaps you know, like natural, like earth, just earthing. Like I, they, they, they only say it for the, when, when it happens in black. Areas, right. By the way. Like I didn't hear nobody talk about devil worshiping when um the tsunami had washed away all of the people over in um what was it Indonesia wherever. They didn't say anything when like ago. Texas was freezing. Yeah, they ain't saying nothing about that when Texas was freezing. Like, it's only when it happens in areas where there are black people that it's suddenly devil worship. And I'm just like, or it's just earth. Maybe y'all want to take, like, geography or earth science or something just to get some clarification on, like, what happens with earth. Sometimes, like, what, what are tectonic plates? And, and what, so, what does this mean? And especially when, like, the reason why this is happening is failed infrastructure. Yes. That's, 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 it's failed infrastructure from people not... Invest in infrastructure. Like what happened with New Orleans is people didn't invest in infrastructure to protect them. Right. And in, then, in, 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 in addition to not doing what they needed to do to get people out in a timely fashion. Yeah. Like the, the infrastructure for the black neighborhood was not strong. Yes. So because of that, it got washed away. Yes. That is, that is, that is correct. Like it's, it's uh, just follow the money on a lot of these things is the bottom line. Like part of it is nature doing what nature does. Cause that's just, that's just what it is. You know, we got volcanoes. We got we, there's all type of natural stuff that, that where 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 you know things get life gets disrupted as a result of them doing what they're designed to do. That being said, it always boils down to the money at the end of the day. Just follow the money, and you'll see why. So you know, prayers to those who are lost. I think it said it's over a thousand people now that they have said have perished as a result of this latest um, earthquake. Um, I haven't seen as many, um, what's the word I want to look for? Like rallying cries for like places to donate if people want to donate. And I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying like compared to like the last earthquake, there were a lot more. But I think given the fact that a lot of Haitians have been on social media like, don't give no money to the Red Cross. Don't give, because a lot of these organizations have taken people's money and have done nothing to help the actual country. So it's like, you really got to search, I guess, to try to figure out like, if you want to donate money or clothes or food or whatever, finding like legitimate organizations that are going to get that stuff to the people because the, the big mainstream organizations have not done that. And so I think that's the chat. That's a yeah. challenge too. I, I, and trying I, I, to figure out, like, how can we help? It's like, yeah, we can thoughts and prayers, but, like, what else can we do? How can we give something tangible? It's, like, kind of hard to figure that out because a lot of the, the, the name brand places that have been doing relief efforts have really not been because, doing anything. Yeah, because, like, um, I think Red Cross, 80% of the funds go to, like, administrative yeah. costs outside of the actual help. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's 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 a challenge. What's next? We gotta go. Um, the next thing. Uh, so they got our boy Cuomo out of here. Um, yeah, he was like deuces. They, I thought Cuomo was gonna stick around and fight and be like, nah, we not going, we not going out like that. Like I'm a G. But then he came on. I think it was like a Tuesday afternoon and was like, yeah, y'all. So, um, I'm gonna head out. Um, in two weeks. Uh, old girl, the lieutenant governor. Uh, she gonna take over and yeah, that's. That's what I've got going on. I said, oh, they must have, they must have came with a thick dossier like and I, said, you could leave or we can release this to the people. What you want to do? I, I've never researched that woman yet. I'm going to research her. Yeah, I haven't looked her up either. I think her name is Ho Hochul. That's how you say her name. Lieutenant Governor Hochul, who will be the governor, I think, officially next week. Um, but they say, yeah, girl, um, Mr. Cuomo, sir, uh, you could leave quietly and respectfully or we could we could give I was like whatever it is they had it was enough to have him quaking in his boots and saying you know what I'm out I'm out most respectfully so yeah he put out a mandate 
I think, and people are arguing, not arguing, but like debating whether it's okay for him to do this because he's like an outgoing governor. But essentially he mandated that, you know, I think starting next Tuesday, um, you can't dine inside New York City restaurants if you don't have uh, proof of vaccination. So people are like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, he can't do that because he's still governor. Yeah, but I guess people are like, oh, well, he's leaving next week. So why can he, why can he, how can he do this? How can he be allowed to, Because he's, he's still governor. And yeah. Are, are you, like, it, that, your argument only makes sense if the person, deputy governor, doesn't agree. Yeah. Which yeah. he might, so doesn't matter what you're saying. Yeah. And he uh, also said, you know, long-term care facility and hospital employees will also have to be vaccinated. And, you know, people ain't trying to hear that. I'm like, I, I don't know what to tell y'all. Um, I think it's getting very weird. Um, and it's, there's a hard line being drawn in the sand now, and I don't know how I feel about it, of unvaccinated people being slowly pushed out of society <laughs> in a way like it's it's getting very like i understand you know trying to maintain public safety but at the same time it's like i feel like we're getting into like a social identity war of vaccinated versus not vaccinated versus and it's like so now you're saying people potentially can't work if they're not vaccinated you're saying people it's, can't like go to restaurants or do certain things. And I, like, again, I understand it's a public health concern, but also it's like not everyone's not vaccinated because they don't want to be vaccinated. Like there are people who have legitimate, like I know someone who has a very rare autoimmune disease and her doctors are like, we don't know if the vaccine could potentially trigger an autoimmune response that will cause a flare up with your disease. It could. It possibly could. So we feel like it's in your best interest not to get the vaccine at this time. So it's like, she would if she could, but she can't. So it's just kind of like, it, it's getting weird. It's getting very weird. And so, and this is not just New York. This is across the country. Like it's getting, it's getting very weird. And, you know, now they're talking about you might have to get a booster shot. And I'm like, listen, that, that's enough out of y'all. Y'all done got two off. I'm not. <laughs> Leave me alone. So we'll, we'll see how this uh, how this whole thing progresses. Um, but yeah, that was it. The only thing I had going on for new music uh, was uh, Lizzo and Cardi B's new song, Rumors. Uh, it's pretty cute. I like it. Um, Jennifer Hudson also put out um, a Respect album. She's been promoting the bejesus out of that movie. Okay. Been promote every time I turn around, Jennifer Hudson in my face. I'm like, well, I keep seeing this lady. Um, but she's promoting the uh, respect movie about Aretha Franklin. I guess maybe we'll try to see it when we go back to New York. Um, Iggy Azalea released an album for those who care about that. Um, YNW Melly also released an album. I feel like there are people who listen to, to him, and that was pretty much it. It was a quiet week, ain't really nothing going on. Music wise. Oh, D Smoke put out a song uh called Shame on You. And uh Lucky Day and Van Jess put out Slow Down. I love Lucky Day. He's such a cool popping artist. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much all that was happening at this Word. point that I can think of. So yeah, I think I think that's it for Live from Cancun. Okay. It's the All Love No Fair Podcast. We are out of here. The Audi 5000. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for listening. We appreciate y'all so much. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. With. <laughs> Until next time. We bid you. I, I do. do. Yeah, we're in, we're in Mexico. I figured let's do the Spanish one. Right, so. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. It's the All Love No Fear Podcast. Hey. It's hey. the All Love No Fear Podcast. Hey. Check hey. us out. Hey. It's the All Love. Oh, 
No Fear Podcast. Podcast. Uh-huh, uh-huh.